Okay, it's day 29 of this mystery plant series one. Let's take a closer look at what's happened. So this was the very first plant to germinate. It has two leaves that look almost dead and some of the new true leaves are beginning to reveal their form. There are not uh, spiky bristles, they're just you know very hairy and you know they're not painful to the touch or anything like that. So they're markedly different from the cotyledons. Um, you know this first true leaf here, or maybe it's the second one if the first one is really small and obscured at this point, but this yeah that's the first true leaf and it sort of looks like some kind of oak leaf but it's all fuzzy so it doesn't really resemble anything I've seen in the chaparral here so this plant had a little bit of trouble gaining entry into the soil thus the root system made a loop on itself the white part as you can see uh, that's another developing plant and from another angle you can hardly see anything because it's so small for this one you can easily see the root system trying to claw its way into the soil so the soil state is a little bit unnatural it's day 38 so the first thing I want to do is show you a device I got that measures the intensity of light at a particular spot it's called a lux meter I got it for twenty dollars off of amazon.com 2014 dollars and what you can see here is, you know, 800 something times 10. I'll zoom in so you can have a better look. But, you know, essentially, geez, it's really hard to see with the glare, but, you know, that's about 1400 times 10. So, what that means is this point is getting 14,000 lux. But what I'm approximating here is the center of the surface of the dirt. If I move this t more towards me to approximate the edge of the surface of the dirt, that would be about 8,000 lux. So that's a huge difference, and the plants at the edge might not be getting the intensity of light that they need to thrive. So let's see. If I move this up a little bit, I'm getting more than 18,000 lux. So that approximates the leaves, the spindly leaves with very long petioles that grow to the surface of the plastic wrap. So from a bird's eye view you can see we're growing a little forest over here of these plants. I still have no idea what this species is. Um, some of these leaves sort of remind me of um, like John Fu Tube said, you know, brassica. It seems like some sort of leafy green that you could eat if it were, you know, 10 to a thousand times bigger. So here's some macro footage of the very first plant, you know, due to underwatering, drying out of the soil, which happens very quickly. The first leaf or two didn't do well, but you have these more successful long spindly leaves with very long petioles. And I don't know if that's a desperate bid to reach higher to gain more access to light or is this how these plants should naturally look so there's a little bit of maybe moss there um, yeah so it's it's just really hard to tell what these things should be at this point because maybe under direct sunlight in a natural environment where the plants are getting 120,000 lumens during the day uh, at noon maybe the petioles would be different in length and you know the leaf morphology would change a little bit and the inner node lengths would be different so in this kind of environment they're kinda shooting upwards in a bid to get more sunlight so to speak so the cotyledons look markedly different they're not as hairy uh, they're also a little bit different in color tone but you know I can't really tell whether this is a weed that grows straight up like this in nature or you know is this a swamp plant because it can't seem to do very well I mean as soon as the surface dries out these things uh, start dying and losing leaves and everything was basically going to be lost unless I put that plastic wrap over the top so I'm having a really hard time figuring out what kind of plant species could survive 90 minutes of 121 Celsius of baking 
you know, and still have its seeds germinate afterwards. And this thing obviously needs a very, very moist environment to thrive. There are no swamps around here, so maybe it's a riparian zone plant. Here's an example of a plant of this species that's not getting enough water. So it's time to water again and replace the saran wrap. So I'm going to spray some 0.5% hydrogen peroxide uh, very tenuously because if I go all out, a whole bunch of things are going to fall over and that's really annoying to try. Yeah, see, um, now I have to fix that, which requires a lot of work. So after a lot of effort, I managed to get that one plant to stand up straight again. I'm going to put on a new sheet of plastic wrap and that will keep everything moist and sterile. I do have the problem of the first two plants growing a little bit too tall and bumping into the plastic wrap. So I haven't really put all that much thought into how I'm going to deal with that, you know, extend the walls upwards or whatnot. But um, I'm thinking I should increase the intensity of the light here by moving this entire container up. All right, so I've elevated this thing on top of a box. And you know, let's take a light meter and see what the reading is would be. You know, really it's only six thousand here and it if you move it to the center, you know you know, maybe it's uh above thirty thousand. So it's great if you're a plant in the center, but for these uh First to germinate ones that are kind of on the edges, I mean, they're not getting anywhere near the amount of light they need, especially because, you know, down here they weren't getting all that much. I know the physics is kind of affected by the reflection here, so, um, you know, I think these will definitely benefit from being elevated. I don't see why not, but I am seriously considering moving this bowl outside to the sunniest spot on my balcony because then everything will get an even amount of light and conditions will be more natural. I might have to take this plastic wrap off at some point to allow for vertical growth. So I've got ginseng seeds in there and other plants as well and it's going to be kind of a delicate balance as to when I'll do all this.